Okay, um, this is Fritz Schalef on uh, Princess M, everyone, and we're uh, we're going to be talking with the race communications team about some fun uh, fun stuff that they're going to be doing this year on the 107th Mac race. Uh, so let's start the interview. Hi guys. Hi Fritz. Hi. Uh, this is Morgan Kinney, and this is Carly. And I, Carly, what's your last name? Austin. Austin. Um, nice to see you here on the Princess to go over some questions about what everybody can expect on the race this year. Thank you for having us. Yeah, glad to be here. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. This is great. Um, so I guess the, one of the main questions that people might have is, is what are we going to expect to see on social media or whatever type of electronic media it is um, about the race while the race is happening? So while the race is happening, you've seen a couple examples of boat tours that we've done already, as well as interviews with the sailors and weather updates, race analyses, and kind of bringing what the Chicago Mac race is to the public. We have tons of friends and family that are following the race. We're really trying to explain what the race is, how the sailors are feeling, and what they're going through, the weather conditions that they're experiencing. So that's pretty much the gist of what you'll see on our social media feed. Cool. Um, and so what are some of the challenges to communicate to some of the people who are, are interested in sailing but haven't raced before? Or maybe even some of the people who haven't ever been sailing before but they love this race or they love the concept of what we're all doing here? So we're really trying to bring the human aspect of the race to our followers. What we're trying to portray is, you know, those four-hour shifts and how much of a pain it is to do that sail change at four in the morning before the sun's come up when it's pouring down rain and really give you the racer experience without having to be there on a boat and just trying to explain what the sailors are going through whether it's winds and waves and providing updates with the boats or the boats are actually providing us mm -hmm. through Twitter or Matt Knighton will be also providing us with video as well as photos and daily blog updates from Amedi, the TP-52. So we have experienced reporters as well as crews that will be tweeting um, with CYCRTM as the hashtag and just bring you those stories that they're experiencing. Um, so once, once the boats start arriving on the island, are you guys going to be talking about Mackinac Island and what is happening there and why it's so special and why, I mean, all the reasons that we actually sail up there and race up there? We'll definitely be riding our horses and going around the island <laughs> on bikes, but really what we're going to be doing is going to the fudge shops and talking to racers. The first boats that will be hitting the dock are the cruising section as followed by the turbo section. We'll be talking to those uh, crews and skippers as soon as they hit the dock, no matter what time it is. We'll do live interviews with them and really figure out, you know, are you sure this is what you wanted? <laughs> are you sure <laughs> this is why you've been sitting out in the middle of the lake for however many days? Hopefully it's a short and fast one, but uh, really we're going to give you everything about why we love going up to Mackinac Island and why we've been doing it for so long. And I think, too, to kind of add to that, one place that you'll really want to look for some of those behind-the-scene updates is Instagram. Kind of as we go um, through all the different locations as boats come in, we'll be snapping real-time um, real photos, and I think that will give you a visual picture of what Mackinac is like for those of you that can't be there. Cool. Um, that brings up another question. Uh, what's, what social media networks will you guys be on? We'll be covering Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and also uploading a lot of videos to YouTube. Cool, cool. And each will, each actual channel will have its own feed, so mm -hmm. you'll want to definitely follow all of them for all yes. of the information. Awesome. Uh, and then you, you you talked about the human element of, of this race, and how what kind of challenges do you guys face as, as the communications team in terms of explaining what crew life is on the boats? Because you're not on the boats with them, and you've said that some of the boats will be able to, to tweet and one boat will be able to do some video. But but not being there on the water, how do you bring that to life to people? So I've actually done two max myself. And having done it before, I, can real, I do have that experience to say, this is what it's really like. But the challenge comes into talking to non-sailors mm -hmm. and our non-sailing public and followers about, you know, what, what it's like 
sleeping down below in six foot waves and dealing with 30 knot winds, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> but the real challenge is just coming for talking sailor language into knowledge for the public. And we're really going to be trying to facilitate that translation for our followers. And some items might be over uh, the general public's heads, but we will be demonstrating, you know, this is why this element is important. This is why we're concerned about this weather forecast. It looks like it might be a little light, a little wet, and it could take a little while. But that's what we're really trying to demonstrate to the public. Uh, which brings up another question, which I think is going off of that. Are you going to be explaining sailing at all to people? Like, you know, here's where they have to tack and what that means and changing sails, etc. Is that part of your job? Yes, so we'll actually be also doing daily race analysis. Uh, fellow commentators Stacy Crossman and Bridget Dixon will be providing a race analysis going through, okay, this is what this boat is coming up against. They're going to have to tack because... That the next boat up is doing that many knots faster than they are and trying to you know play the winds and play the course because you don't want to make that big mistake and pull a flyer right um, how many boats are in the, the race this year we have 324 entries from most of them are from the Midwest but we have boats coming from as far as Texas the Orma 60, they came all the way from France. It was just a delivery from France this past spring, but this is their second big race of the season. Uh, they'll be doing the Super Mac. And we've also got a multi-hole from Texas, the Royal Canadian Yacht Club, and racers from as far as New Zealand. Wow, that's really cool. Um, can, you, can you explain to viewers what the Super Mac is? How it's different from the Mac? The Super Mac takes a special kind of person to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially if they're doing it on the 30-foot boat that has entered this year. They're the smallest boat in the Super Mac. Uh, the Super Mac, you will start in Chicago, sail all the way past Mackinac Island, pat through the finish line, your finish is recorded for the race to Mackinac, and then you go all the way into Port Huron and finish after 500 plus miles. It's amazing. It's crazy. Um, well, talking about the finish, um, the, the Mac race has this handicap system, and you can see boats come in and they'll cross the finish line first, but they don't win first place sometimes. So, how does the handicap system work, and is that is that tough to explain to viewers or followers on social media? The handicap system does get a little complicated for the general public. However, we can really translate that into the fastest boat isn't always the winner. The boat that crosses the line first, the line honors they may fall back a few spots and really trying to update people as those stats come in because we are doing live results. Um, so on Yacht Scoring, on our cycracemacnaw.com, we will be updating the results as they come in. And so we'll be able to update people with the handicap ratings and why boats fall back the way they do. For instance, Princess M might have a little heavier rating um, you know, in the higher numbers than, let's say, a Beneteau 36.7, just to give you a little comparison. Just because the princess is bigger. Yeah. Bigger, heavier, mm -hmm. more sail area. Those right. are the elements that play into the handicap system. Right. And, it, and overall, it kind of, it, am I right in the sense that it helps, it helps everybody understand who sailed the best race as opposed to who's, who just went the fastest. Right, it's just like golfing or if you're bowling with a handicap, bowling with bumpers. That's what essentially the ORR system and any handicap system is in racing. What about explaining the safety regulations and things like that? Is that something that you guys are planning to do, looking forward to doing, or is it something that you feel like is necessary to help people understand? It is 300 plus miles on open water. People forget how dangerous Lake Michigan can, be, can really be. And people who come from the oceans may underestimate the perils that we experience on the lake. And so one of the things that we definitely want to, you know, cover with people is what we do have on board to keep ourselves safe. Whether it's the new deck vest life jackets that which the ones that are Coast Guard approved versus the ones that aren't, having that flip knife that you can open with one hand and demonstrating what some of these safety accessories that we have on board are. 
Right. Um, how will people find out where the boats are on the lake as they're going up? So if you go to a cycracetomackinon.com, there's the race tracking tab at the very top of our webpage. That will be live starting tomorrow. You can also download the app in the iPhone or the Apple Play Store or Apple Store and mm -hmm. the Google Play Store. Um, it's YB tracking, and you'll be able to view the whole race straight from your phone. That's really cool. Um, and then on social media, if people are looking for race information, uh, I think you mentioned a hashtag earlier. What, what's the hashtag again? What, what should people search for? It's hashtag CYCARTM. And if you use that across Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, that'll pull up all the information that's being put out there by ourselves, by folks, by their followers and people. If you want to ask questions, you can use that hashtag and direct it at us, and we'll be happy to answer those questions. Well, cool, guys. Thank you so much for helping everybody understand what you guys are going to do and all the challenges that are before you in the next couple of days and, and on the race. This is great. I hope everybody is enjoying this, and we'll try to do more of these things with the, with the race and with the princess and with the Yacht Club and everybody else. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care. Thank you guys. For